All right, guys, how's it going? Hopefully this video uh, syncs well with the audio. Uh, yeah, my name's Doug. Uh, video is going to be about the mucosus diet healing system. Actually, I want to cover uh, three three different things. Uh, first, I wanted to give props to uh, Hilton Hotema. I've been reading quite a bit of his work, and uh, it complements... Arnold Eretz work extremely well um, with just a, a better understanding of the, the science behind uh, human physiology. Uh, so I was, thought I'd start this video out with just like a quick read from his book called Facts of Nutrition. Very good read. Very interesting. Very dense has a lot of great information, uh, and I'll just go ahead and read a few sentences. Um, so, the title of this section is called Food Does Not Produce the Body. Food and drink are required only as the occasion and condition that bring into action the vital processes that manufacture from invisible substance the atomic products that build, sustain, repair, and vitalize the organism. That is the reason why medical art knows nothing about vital energy and the process of nutrition with the organism. Nothing can sustain that which it cannot produce. If the living organism is not the product of food and drink, it is not sustained by these. Sadly, do scientists miss, miss the mark when they seek for the sustaining power of life and health and things beneath them. Food and drink are only the occasion and condition for the operation of productive process. But their sustaining and vitalizing power is a friction of medical minds. So, I think essentially what he's trying to get across is the fact that we are not alive because we eat food and drink water. Um, it is much more than that. Uh, but we do use food to stimulate the vital processes within the body um, if necessary, if we've come accustomed to them. Um, and that's essentially what Eric builds on too, is the fact that we do not grow because we eat a bunch of meat or eat a bunch of food. It's already within our own physiology. And, um, and essentially, um, you know, you can't feed a cow meat to, for it to get more muscle. You don't eat, you know, I mean, just look at a gorilla, for example. I mean, he's out in the jungle eating grass and leafy greens and he'll rip your head off, um, the reason why he doesn't need all that stuff is he just needs to stimulate those natural processes within the body and he's healthy he's gonna live a really long time he's gonna be full of vital energy um, but the other topic I wanted to touch on was the magic mirror in Professor Arnold Eretz's mucosis diet healing system um, this summer, I actually uh, paid quite a bit of attention to the magic mirror as I went through and did some more, uh, some probably the most uh, intense fasting I've done. I actually found it quite a bit easier to uh, sustain a fast and kind of maintain a, a mucusless diet, well, a periodic mucusless diet during summer when it was warm versus the uh, colder months now. So you can see I got the beanie on, got the sweatshirt, got the heat pumping. But uh, anyways, I wrote down a couple things. So Arnold Eret essentially describes the, uh, the magic mirror um, as the tongue and you can see, essentially get an idea of what your insides look like according to the on your tongue and I actually touched on this last video but there are other external organs um, which I think can provide um, 
a similar showing, such as the hair, the tongue, the nose, the ears, and ultimately the skin. Um, these will all reflect your internal cleanliness as below, as above. Your insides are going to reflect your outsides or your skin. Um, so just to go over my personal experiences with these external organs or secondary organs, um, I'll start with my hair. And I actually thought it was pretty interesting. Um, as soon as I started the diet, I actually started growing out my hair. It was extremely short. Um, and, you know, I didn't even put two and two together that uh, when a lot of people get into this diet or, you know, um, just a call to nature, I guess you could say, that they uh, tend to grow their hair out. And I guess I kind of unconsciously did the same thing. But uh, uh, a few things I noticed while... I was on a mucusless, high juicy fruit um, period, uh, eating a lot of melons, a lot of citrusy fruits, a lot of grapes, um, and then I would do a huge leafy green salad at night. But uh, I actually noticed that over time, my hair uh, stopped becoming greasy. And so I actually found that I had, didn't have a need for shampoo or any form of soap in my hair anymore um, for, I mean, weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, pretty much the point where, like, I never, I don't even wash my hair anymore. And I, you know, don't think it smells, looks, looks, feels strong, um, looks healthy, feels strong. Um, sorry, it's pretty late at night and I feel like I'm going to pass out pretty soon. Um, wash your face, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, it just felt extremely healthy, extremely clean naturally without having to use any products. Um, and then my tongue, um, after a certain period of time of being on a uh, mucosis regimen, <coughs> I found that my tongue was extremely clean. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, had no need to even really brush my teeth for that matter. This is going to, I mean, this kind of sounds strange maybe to some people, but I actually found that my, uh, my hygiene in my mouth became so naturally clean from the foods that I was eating and my internal cleanliness that I found myself only taking a toothbrush and you know, scrubbing on my teeth a couple times a week, not even using, not even using toothpaste. And I probably didn't, you know, brush my teeth with toothpaste and all that stuff for, well, like I said, I would use the toothbrush, you know, a couple times a week, but I mean, didn't use toothpaste for like a month. And my teeth are whiter and stronger now than they've ever been and I stopped yes I stopped brushing my teeth on a regular basis Woo. Um, and so that just kind of goes to show how erroneous you know some of the uh, the ideas that have been instilled into our culture as far as personal hygiene goes you know brushing your teeth every single day getting them clean even really the need for a dentist anymore. Um, I mean, I haven't been in like 12 years. I don't ever think I'll probably go, um, you know, knock on wood, but you know, it's looking good now. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, you know, cause you know, cavemen didn't have, you know, a toothbrush. And so how do they clean their teeth? Um, what I noticed too, the number one, fruit that I found that helped me keep my teeth clean were apples. Just the fat, just the uh, process of biting into an apple would completely clean the whole front part of my mouth and then I would take a long period of time to consciously chew 
and go between both sides of my molars and actually found that after eating an entire apple or maybe you know some other type of fruit that was a little heartier um, it would just completely clean my teeth and just uh, they would just feel awesome um, no stopped running and that's probably a pretty obvious one um, it's a little runny now just because it's cold it's not like the mucus coming out but it's just like that really like thin clear liquid occasionally not not too bad at all um, it still takes super deep breaths feeling pretty clean um, so yeah during summer definitely found that my uh, sinuses were extremely clear and the biggest benefit I found was actually waking up in the morning. You know, I was so used to waking up with a clogged nose and just kind of wake up and start blowing some mucus out and just like not really getting my day started very energetically. It's kind of like when you start a car and it just kind of sputters and just doesn't really fire right up. Whereas I found when I was able to wake up with extremely clear sinuses I could just take a huge breath and it was almost just like a light bulb turned on and I was just like um, just blasted with energy and I just found that I had um, a much easier time getting up and functioning in the morning um, which actually led me to stop drinking the occasional cup of coffee too because I just felt uh, like I had such an easier time waking up which is just kind of uh, get, I mean yeah it just kind of helped me um, help me start functioning a bit better in the morning which just kind of helped me out through the rest of the day um, let's see here touch on ears uh, he touches on ears as an external organ. Um, I wasn't able or didn't pay as much attention to my ears, although um, I don't feel like they're extremely nasty in any way, shape, or form. I mean, maybe a little bit now, but I probably should have kept track of that. Um, big one, though, uh, is the skin. Uh, so during summer, um, I had my shirt off quite a bit. It was warm, you know, floating the river, swimming, you know, working in the garden, uh, yada, yada, yada. But uh, I became so much darker than I have in my entire life. And I don't just mean like my face and my shoulders, but like my stomach, my legs, certain parts of my body that just never really seemed to tan very well. And it wasn't like I was going out and just laying out in the sun all day. I mean, um, I was just going about my normal routine, but just, I mean, completely different complexion and skin tone. Um, I mean, I was even told on multiple occasions that my skin seemed healthier, more vibrant, um, sh like like it almost had like a shinier hue to it than it normally did um, and it just resonated um, I also noticed the uh, the body odor uh, decreased substantially after a week or so going completely mucusless um, to the point where I stopped showering I mean I even stopped uh, getting my body wet for a couple weeks and uh, I eventually stopped having that really pungent body odor and funny story I was actually um, living in a little dorm uh, I was actually doing a yoga life immersion program during the summer so learning the lifestyle of a yogi or yogic philosophy or yogic lifestyle um, which is you know there's there's more than just you know the the physical yoga postures it's actually an entire lifestyle um, 
which was super awesome. But yeah, I was in the dorms and I was actually standing next to uh, next to my buddy. Oh, my computer's about to die. I might have to uh, shut this down kind of quick. But uh, I was standing next to my buddy and he goes, "Man, why do you why do you smell like fruit?" And I was like, "What do you mean smell like fruit?" He's like, "Dude, your armpits, your body odor. You just you kind of have like a." like a fruit scent, not like super, super sweet, but I can smell fruit coming out of you. And I was, I didn't really say much, and I was just like, hmm, that's, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Right on. Um, but yeah, stop sweating is easy. Um, and then I only got a minute or two left. Last thing I want to touch on is smoking on the mucosus diet healing system, and I don't mean cigarettes. Um, yeah, so for me, when I smoke, I get the munchies incredibly bad uh, to the point where mucus and diet healing system goes out the window. That, yeah, no, no good. And so for me, a few things that I've noticed, if you're like me, where you get the munchies extremely bad, is that uh, eating before you smoke makes a huge difference. Uh, make sure you're fulfilled or you know satiated before you smoke. That way, you don't smoke then eat because for me it leads to overeating, um, which is never good in my case because it goes from mucusless to not pus but the most mucus forming foods I could ever think of. Um, so yeah. I just try to stay away from food once I start smoking and make sure I've already eaten. Um, because once I do give in to cravings, I literally cannot stop. Um, I mean, a couple weeks ago, yeah, I ate half a jar of peanut butter and probably like a thousand calories in dates. Um, so, I mean, that's, you know, 2,500 calories and just constipating junk. Um, especially the peanut butter. I was, it's whatever, but I mean, it's not something I would have done if I was sober, um, which tells me something right there. Um, but yeah, one thing that I that does help me um, if I am uh, under the influence is uh, just drinking water or like water and lemon or lemon water, just something light that's just like that I can feel going into my body like it's it's just like need to be consuming something with the munchies and water is probably the least harmful for me um, yeah my computer's about to turn off but thank you guys for tuning in um, Yeah, I think that's pretty much all I got, guys. Take care. Have a good night. Peace.